licenciado. Igualmente, um, um, Chuy Ramirez, correct? That's correct. Um, so we're focusing on this book here, Strawberry Fields, a book of short stories. And uh, a lot of questions come to my mind as I, as I look just at the, uh, the cover of this book. But uh, let me begin with the following question. You were motivated to write this uh, book, uh, and how did that happen? Did you have like a, a revelation? How did that first idea come about writing this book? Well, uh, you know, I'm an attorney, and as an attorney in my practice, a lot of what we do is to read and write. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, oh, you're on camera, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> So you want to be? You can. We can include you. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, start over. No, let's keep it. <laughs> let's keep it. <laughs> so we're doing the famous Montalete interview. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know. Okay. So uh, you can talk a little bit so we can pick you up. And I'm okay with the background. Um, so again, uh, start with uh, what was the motivating factor behind? Well, as, as I was saying, I'm an attorney, and obviously. Oh. Yeah, Transactional trades, which means that we read and write a lot in English. Okay. Uh, but as, but since I was a very young child, uh, storytelling was very, very, very important to me. And uh, back when I was in my early fifties, I had some, I had some issues, with some, some, some problems with, uh, uh, with my heart, and I've always wanted to write, and that provided the impetus for me to finally say. You know, Life is not that lengthy, and if I'm going to do something, I better start doing that. So that's that's really what. And I had uh, my kids and grandkids, and I, I really began writing for them. Essentially, that was my, my one of my first audiences. Un legado. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Some kind of legacy. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have some very interesting characters in this book. How would you characterize all of the characters if you had to give a, uh, an adjective, for example, or a verb of what is the overarching uh, dynamics that is taking place? Chicanos from South Texas during the 50s and 60s. Okay, okay. Those are the characters in these, uh, what I call the short story version, yes. Right, right, right. And you chose a uh, historical fiction approach, is that close? Yes, all of the, uh, all of these vignettes are, are, the settings for all of these vignettes is uh, deep south Texas along the Big Valley. Okay. And the characters are farm workers, uh, children of immigrants from the 50s and 60s. Okay. If that helps. Okay, sure. Yeah. So um, there's an undercurrent, so to speak, a subtext in your writings in this book and other books. But of course, we're focused on uh, strawberry fields. What is that subtext? What is the dominant sub subtext in your in your in this publication in these stories? The 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 the, the, the vignettes are. Uh, I would call them glimpses mm -hmm. at uh, different characters. These are fictional characters uh, that compose a family. The, and the under uh, the, the subtext in, in a lot of my work, the subtext have to do with relationships between uh, a, a Mexican father and a and, and his children who are no longer Mexican, at least in the way that he is in Mexico. Okay. And also one of the subtext is the role of women, mm -hmm. mothers and sisters in the Chicano communities of the 50s and 60s. Okay. Okay. Um, 
there's an emotional side to writing uh, this book that you published. Uh, is it more focused? Is that, is that part more emotional? Yeah. Or is it more functional? Yeah. Are you wanting this to, to have a social function as well by the people who read it? The primary, the, the, I think the primary objective of any, of any fiction work like this mm -hmm. has to be entertainment. Okay. That's the primary, primary function. Okay. Secondarily, if, if your subtext has, uh, can, you can conveniently use uh, an imposed view into what the writers do without interfering with the entertainment, mm -hmm. then you do that. And that's what I try to do uh, in, in, in all my writing. Uh, I try to make it, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the fiction writing, I try and first and foremost entertain, but there's always subtext, subplots, uh, and all the time it has to do with uh, basically Mexicanos, Chicanos. Um, one more question. If you would have had an identical twin, what do you... What do you think that identical twin would have been assigned to do uh, in regards to putting this publication together? He said he's uh, willing to support From the beginning to the end. Would you want to have some assignments for this identical twin? Do you think that, it, do, you, do you envision that that identical twin would have helped you out? Not having an identical twin, uh, it's hard for me to to imagine that, but I guess if I if I have to guess, mm -hmm. I would I would say that it probably would have been an extremely close collaboration, mm -hmm. and uh, to bounce ideas and characters and, and the like. And mm -hmm. I do that a lot with, for example, my wife. Mm -hmm. I do that with my my older sister, mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to women characters, mm -hmm. and my daughter. Uh, and, and uh, so I suspect that if I did have an identical twin, we would probably go through those kinds of discussions in putting together, you know, plots and characters and the like. Okay. Uh, one more question uh, uh, comes to my mind, and now I want to talk about uh, Chicano uh, aesthetics. As you know, the word aesthetics uh, is the philosophy of art, right? whether it's something related to beauty, uh, et cetera, our values. Uh, so one of the cultural theories that our museum is working on goes under the name Te Chi Huizintle, aesthetics. It's a word from the Nahuatl language, which, which means a remedy for curing pain and shame. How do you see your work as maybe beginning that process of, of uh, breaking down pain and shame among those people who read it, they may relate to your story. That's a very interesting question. And I would, I would say this, that it is, that, that, that it is, if, if that's the aesthetic that we seek for, then that's, that that's the aesthetic that, that all novelists and short, short storytellers seek. And, uh, and if, you don't, if you don't accomplish that, I think you fail. Because it seems to me that, that what we try to do as fictional writers, is we, we try to entertain in light of our pain. Say that again, please. We try to entertain in light of our pain. In light of your pain. The, 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 the pain that you talk about, the, the circumstances, the situations, the experiences so that are painful to people, mm -hmm. you put them in a light that can be inter entertaining. Comedians do that a lot. Mm -hmm. right? Self deprecation and, and yeah. so forth. And the reason that you do that is because there is relief from pain mm -hmm. when you when you're able to creatively yeah. use that aesthetic, even if it's temporary. It it always is temporary, mm -hmm. temporary and temporary. Yeah. Uh, and and so by sharing the by sharing experiences, that's what happens. And I'll give you this example. A lot of the settings uh, uh, in these in all my books, a lot of the settings are settings that that 
that people will come to me and they will say something like, you know, I remember that. Mm -hmm. We were there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, it was, or it was like an experience we had. Mm -hmm. My dad was that actual witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mom was one. I know of somebody who's like that now. <laughs> <laughs> right. They might say. They might, right. And so what, what, they, what they're doing is that you're not exactly uh, creating an image for them that is exactly mm -hmm. what their memory uh, contains, mm -hmm. but it is something that they can work with mm -hmm. and they can imagine, they can relate to. And they can say, if you create an affinity mm -hmm. uh, with a, a legitimacy mm -hmm. with, with the author, mm -hmm. when, when, when you're able to say as a reader, man, you get that way. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes a good writer. Mm -hmm. Where at some point you're enthralled in the story, yeah. and the language, is, you know, the words are in the right, the right place, they have the right words, and you can read seamlessly mm -hmm. that you don't want to put the book down. Right. That's what the writer is trying to do in a, in a, in a short story or a, or a novel. Do you consider yourself a word reader? I'm sorry? Do you consider yourself yourself a word reader? You like Words you like the, uh, to to words. manipulate words, etc. I love words. Uh, writing is writing is, uh, and I'm very slow at it. <laughs> very methodical. Yeah, very yeah. painful yeah, for yeah. me. Um, but I love language. Okay, I'm grinning because of this new word that I'm introducing to you. Word eater. I never heard that. <laughs> bueno, uh, Señor Ramirez. Uh, from my point of view, uh, this is uh, a seminal work uh, from my perspective that I have not seen before, uh, especially as it relates to the context of South Texas and uh, connecting to the Chicano identity uh, in using many lenses. So uh, again, uh, muchas gracias, and uh, we hope to Skype you in the future. Uh, and. Uh, in my view, you're a living treasure of Texas. Wow, wow. I appreciate it. So, wow. Thank you so much. Great compliment. Pleasure. I thought I was the